Shalom WJC family. It is time for our weekly Torah talk. This week in Shul, we'll be reading Parsha Vayeshev, which uh, begins the, the Joseph saga that we'll read for the next few weeks. Uh, certainly a favorite of mine, a great um, and meaningful story towards the end here of the book of Genesis. And when we think about the Joseph story, we usually think of two things. One very beautiful coat that makes his brothers jealous, and dreams. Now, dreams have actually been on my mind for the last several months. Uh, at the end of March, the beginning of April, I started to have a bunch of really weird and graphic dreams. Now, I don't usually even remember my dreams, but starting then, and even until now, on and off, lately a little bit more, I've been remembering my dreams much more often, and they've been very, um, very weird and graphic and memorable. And apparently I'm not the only one. Because starting in April, I also saw a lot of articles about, uh, about people having more dreams, remembering their dreams, and why that might be happening, looking for scientific reasons. Now, I don't think you need to be a sleep scientist to know that when people are more anxious, when their life patterns are changing, uh, their sleep patterns, their eating patterns, they are likely to have um, uh, a change in their dream life as well. But I think there's even more that we can learn about this from looking at, uh, you know, this is not the first time people have wondered about dreams. It's not the second time or the thousands time. Here we are in the Bible 3,500 years ago, give or take, and Joseph already sees something special in his own peculiar dreams. So uh, Rabbeinu David Kimchi, uh, the Radak, is commenting on, uh, on these dreams that Joseph has. For the first dreams that he has at the beginning of Parsha Vayeshev, the first one he has about sheaves, 11 sheaves bowing to one sheave. And he says, huh, I think this means, he tells his brothers, who already are not fans of his because of his coat and being his father's favorite, I think this means you're all going to bow to me. Then he has another dream, the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing down to one star. And he says, ah, you know, I think this means that not only are you 11 brothers going to bow down to me, but mom and dad are too. The brothers are incensed. This ultimately leads to him, you know, them, them throwing him in a pit, selling him into slavery, and the unfolding of the rest of Jewish history, including Jacob and the brothers ending up in Egypt under the rule of Joseph. And ultimately, right, we know that leads to the whole Exodus story and the Jewish story as we know it. It starts with these dreams. What the Radak asks is, he knows his brothers hate him. I mean, it's clear you can't be so hated by your 11 brothers and not know it. They must have treated him differently, left him out, talked about him, all these things. Why does he tell them these dreams that seem so obviously to match them up against him. And what Radak says is, maybe that's not the case. Radak mentions a principle that we learn in the Talmud from Brachot that says, kol hachalomot holchim acharpeh. Right? All dreams go after the mouth. In other words, the meaning of the dream is actually created by the one who interprets it. Right? The dream doesn't have its own inherent meaning. Only the one who interprets it gives it its meaning. And so he goes to tell his brothers these dreams, not to say, hey, I'm going to rule over you, according to Kimchi, but hoping that they'll actually have a positive interpretation. This might make them uh, closer to him, and it might diffuse, uh, diffuse his, uh, their hatred of him. But I'm really, I'm really fascinated by this idea Right? All dreams go after the mouth. Let's bring that back to us and our weird graphic dreams that we're having and we wake up and oh, what did that mean? Well, the answer is, it means whatever meaning we put on it. Right? That, that principle, that idea means that we can't control what's going to be in our dreams. And sometimes these dreams are disturbing and difficult. However, we do control what they mean in our lives. 
right? When we have a dream and we wake up, we feel a certain way, or we think it might have a certain meaning, and we act on that meaning, that part is in our control. It's up to us to decide if a dream is a good omen or a bad omen and what is it is instructing us to do. The fact is that the dreams of our sleep we cannot control, but the dreams of our waking life we can control. And the message of Joseph, and Joseph lives this out. He has these dreams. They're a little wacky, Radak says, like, I don't know, sheaves, suns and moons. Later on, we have the butler and the baker and their dreams that Joseph interprets in prison with wine and bread and birds. We look at these dreams, and it's obvious what they mean. But it's not really. We've just been learning them since we were little kids, some of us anyway. So the dreams are like riddles, says Radak, for us to figure out. And it's up to us how we want these dreams to impact our lives. It is true. These are anxious times, stressful times. There's a reason why we are having peculiar dreams. Sleep might be a little more adventurous than it's been in the past. But waking, it is our choice what dreams we will pursue and how will we pursue them, how we let them impact our lives. Joseph's model is to take those dreams and to leverage those dreams and those ideas to his own success. Not only his own success, but taking care of others, taking care of the Egyptians, rationing the food, taking care of his family, ultimately finding success. And he has his setbacks. And it's an adventure and it's a journey. It's what makes it a good story that we still read today. But he leverages his dreams his difficult night sleeping to positive days of waking, and we have the same choice. It is up to us to bring our dreams to life in positive ways, to, like Joseph, help them inspire us to help others, to take care of our families, to do the best we can by a world who needs us, that needs us desperately, and ultimately to find success to see that people are fed and cared for and healthy. That is our job. That is what our dreams, if that's how we put them in our mouths, if that's how we interpret them, can compel us. That's what they can compel us to do. That is in our hands. And so I pray as we, uh, as we read Parsha Vayeshev this week that we are all able to capture our dreams. And we bring them into our waking lives to bring them in a positive way, to bring positivity for ourselves and positivity into the world around us, and thus to walk in the tracks and the footsteps of our ancestor, Joseph. Shabbat Shalom.